The Volunteer Low Cost Spay and Neuter Clinic is a 501c3 organization. We gained our not-for-profit status in August of 2011. This helps us raise funds, receive grants, and fulfill our mission of reducing the staggering, out-of-control, unwanted pet population. Since opening on May 25th of 2010, we have performed slightly over 1,550 surgeries. The Volunteer Low-Cost Spay and Neuter Clinic provides low-cost, high-quality spay and neuter surgeries and vaccines for domestic cats, feral cats, and dogs. Our mission is dedicated to ending pet overpopulation in Marion and Baxter counties and create healthier, happier pets. By working to lead the public in responsible pet ownership, we will reduce the unwanted pet population and produce more adoption opportunities for animals currently in shelters. What you see here today is how we feel we can best meet the needs of Marion County residents and their pets, okay? And uh, before you get started, Eddie's gonna do a little role playing okay. and to make it, to get you involved in here, okay? All right. But you don't need to be worried about any of the animals that you're being assigned because they're not vicious. They have great personalities. This is Bubba. Okay. All right, Bubba. And this is Bubba. And Bubba's family moved and left him behind, so he suffers, suffers from separation anxiety. But you never have to worry about losing Bubba. He'll stick to you like a tick on a dog. Oh, I'm sorry, Bubba. <laughs> and this is Mr. Sweetie. Now, Mr. Sweetie, if you don't call him Sweetie, he won't like it. Mr. Sweetie has an attitude problem. What he lacks in size, he makes up for in attitude, okay? But before we get started on that, I need to give you a little background information. Okay. The, I came here in 2006. Before that, I had done rescue work and educational programs in the grade schools for kids, for pets, okay? Uh, the problem with that is eventually you end up getting stuck. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up with 10 pets. 10 pets with special needs. <laughs> so that was the end of that for money and every size. Yeah. No more of that. But I still wanted to continue working with animals. And I had heard that our Kansas for Animals had an opening for a veterinary. So I said, this, is, this would probably work. So at the time, Pat Dagenet, who's here, who's vice president and co-founder of this organization, I, I told her what I wanted to do. And she said, yeah, I like that idea because she was a Pat person too. Now, Pat was executive secretary for Exxon for many years, so she has a lot of strong organizational skills. And the great thing about this relationship is that although we have never had an argument, which is very rare, we have never had an argument, we frequently don't agree. And that creates a very a situation where you make balanced decisions for all your animals, okay? Because you get to look at the other side of the coin. Sure. You know? So we went door to door and we got wonderful volunteers, we got cash donations, we started getting crates. We had to borrow crates from other people when we first started. Um, and so that's how we get all our wonderful volunteers. Today there's four of us on the board. There's myself, Mitch Porter Schultes, president, uh, Pat Dagenet, uh, vice president, uh, Linda Vincent, who's a secretary, and she was, uh, ran a, as was a hospital administrator for years, and Babby Walden, who does our books, who runs uh, Mill Creek uh, Storage and Mill Creek uh, Pet Kennel, okay? So we have a very strong board of directors, and that's good because, again, we don't seem to argue. We might argue at a board meeting, but everybody wants what's best for the animals. Sure. So we make some good, solid decisions that way. Um, the clinic is the volunteer low-cost spay and neuter clinic. Volunteer because no one is paid, okay? And I can squeeze a penny into a little scream. Absolutely everything that we get in here, we try to get donated or worst case scenario at cost, okay? Um, we run three clinics a year, four days each, and they're, uh, we do 35 to 40 animals a day. So essentially we're doing about 500 spay and neuters a year. Wow. Okay? Um, let's see, I love, oh yes. What happens is the first thing you need to do when somebody comes in the clinic, they have to call you, okay? A lot of the people who call us have feral cats. They have no clue how to trap a feral cat. Uh, we had a lady, a very first clinic, she had 40 feral cats. She lived on a farm, 40 feral cats. And she came in 
uh, she was registered for three cats and two dogs. And she said, I can't get any of those cats. So what we do is we loan them a, a trap. We don't even charge them a fee for using it, the, 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 the deposit money. Right. Because people who are broke, all you have to do is give them any deterrent at all and the job isn't going to get done. Right. Okay? So we loan them a trap and we make them fill out a form that says that they borrowed the trap and how long they... I've done this 14 years, I've never lost one trap. I've had to go after a few, but we've never lost one trap. Okay? So then the next thing that happens is we give them instructions on how to trap. Eddie will tell you, we've done that with Eddie. Okay? And we loan them the trap and we read the instructions and then we tell them that the m most important thing about trapping a feral cat is don't try to trap for 10 days. You wire it open, you get the cat used to going in and out of there, comfortable with its own scent, and then when you've got your vet clinic arrangement set up, that's the day you trap, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate here for you. Somebody was gonna have to read it, but since there's just the three of us, okay? So, Bob, I'm loaning you this trap, all right? Okay. And you've never trapped before. So what, what at first happened is we tell people they had to wire the trap open. Well, people had a heck of a time doing that and they get disgusted. And I'd have to bring the trap home, give it to my landlord, con him into trapping it open. He said, I'm tired of this. <laughs> he said, there must be a better way. This is the better way. So now we take this stick, we tell you, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> and now go. it's wired open, okay? So when you're feeding the animal, you make sure that the thing goes past this here, right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And you cover the back half of it like this with a towel. So the animal gets the feeling that they're in a cage or someplace where they're safe, okay? And you feed them a, a little dry food with a little wet because they can smell that, okay, for 10 days. Then the day you have your appointment for the veterinarian, these have a heart traps are wonderful. They're very simple to operate. So then the day you're gonna trap, all you have to do is see this little lever right here? Mm -hmm. All you take is you take this lever and pull it forward and you're done. Oh. And you're trapped, okay? Now, also in these instructions, everything I tell you is in these instructions. Also in these instructions, it'll say to you that when you're going to capture that cat, you have to watch your trap. Every half an hour, you have to at least be checking your trap because a feral cat who gets into a trap will smash itself along the side until it bleeds. Oh. And the minute you put that thing over it, it settles right down. It's quite, if you're ever having to take a, a cat to the vet or something or on a trip, just cover it. It's gonna settle right down on you, hmm. okay? Any questions with that? No, that's good. Okay. Oh, good, I like that. Great I information. A, I got an A on that one. Um, okay, now, Eddie? Yes, sir. Did you? You would? Oh, okay. Mr. Did you Sweet? find that envelope? Mr. Oh, Sweet. Well, there's a good fix today. Can you find him on my paper? Wait. Wait. Oh, I'm right. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to fill out the paperwork. Now, is this cat tame or is he a feral? He's feral. He's feral. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, we will serve it. Okay. 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 60, 65, 66, 67. Okay. Uh, every person who comes in here who works with cats or dogs has to read how to take care of those animals before they go in there. Nobody comes in here as a volunteer and just starts taking care of animals. Right. Okay? I mean, it's very extensive, as you can see. There's yeah. two sides here. Okay? So Eddie's going to go in. Every cat gets a. a collar that's put around it. That way, let's say you have two black cats and somebody gets out, you know whose cat mm -hmm. you got. Sure. Nobody gets lost, okay? And those, the collar gets put on by the owner. Yes. So we'll just it, say Eddie this did goes it. On, Yes. And, and then you would take this into the bathroom, lock the door, put the collar on the cat, and then bring the cat back out. That way there's no way that it can get away. Okay. And we have a double check. Recovery this area. is the recovery area, and so we never go from cat to cat without handling anything, without cleaning our hands first. Here we have Sissy. She has had her surgery, so we would bring her back, support the back end and the head, and put them on the mat here, 
and then we would go ahead and clean the incision and we have the alcohol wipes for that and sometimes the hair sticks so we would be careful to hold the incision and pull all that out ahead of time so the cat doesn't try and chew at it afterwards because it would bother them so they don't mind it when they're asleep right so then we would turn the cat every 20 minutes from one side to the other to keep their lungs from being becoming congested and we can usually massage them a little bit try and encourage them to wake up sure because owners are waiting to get them back so uh, and this can take anywhere from five minutes if it's a feral cat because they wake up very quickly to hours some of them really, really? sleep they milk it <laughs> yeah yeah okay. so but that's that's the process, and once they start to become awake by lifting their head or starting to crawl a little bit, or then um, we would go ahead and check the incision again, use the pee pad here, and put them back in their carrier, and then they go back out to the intake. With this slip, we tell the girls out there, they may call the owner, if there is just one pet. Everybody comes in with their dog or cat, and the first thing they do is they go to go the intake. Let's see, here's this guy coming in with the dog. And he hasn't paid his money, he's just come in. We stop him right away and make the dog go in there. I so see. that a dogs can't get in a fight or anything. Right. And only one dog at a time goes in there. I okay? See. And then the cat people go over here and like Eddie had a loose cat, mm -hmm. they make him, they grab it, that person and they make him get a cage right away so okay. that nobody gets away. Sure. And sometimes when we have extra cages, um, the person who had no cage when they brought, we give them a cage for free to go home with, okay? okay? And we tell them you should never have a cat riding in a car without a cage. They'll go berserk on you, yeah. okay? When you bring a dog back from surgery, it's not like bringing a cat back from surgery. A cat comes back in the little cage. Right. But a dog, you have to carry it, awesome. okay? So one of our volunteers made this for us. This is a stretcher. Oh, it's a st dog right. stretcher. Right, So because they're dead weight when you pick them up. Well, yeah. yeah. So this is for small, well, small dogs usually come back in a cage, yeah. in a little cage, but medium to larger size get in here. And then like this big St. Bernard, he's gonna go right on here. Oh, on a real stretcher. He's gonna go on a real stretcher so that nobody hurts their back or anything. Right. Okay. Anybody who has a dog who bites, they come in, they leave their dog in the car. They come in here and they loan a muzzle for us. Do you ever talk to Dog Town on TV? Uh, North, uh, anyhow, they have the biggest, they have 300,000 acres in Utah or whatever. They're the biggest. So when I looked for a dog spray, I called them, and this is what they recommended. Okay. So the, the, and then everybody knows how to use it. If there's a spray, fight, you just do this right away, and that's the end of the fight. It takes care of the dogs and takes care of the volunteers. But otherwise, you see, we cover up dogs to keep them quiet, the same like you do a cat, okay? If a dog is really hyper and pacing and just, you know, I go to the vet and she comes and gives it a tranquilizer and knocks it out a little so it's not stressed out before sure. surgery. When you called me on the phone and you wanted to come into this clinic, there's a variety of questions that I ask. And the clinic operates on a point system. I'm allowed 40 points a day. And how that works out is it's the point, an animal is given a point depending on how long it takes to do surgery on them. So a female dog is the most with two points. Then a male dog and a female cat both get one point. And, uh, yeah. and then a male cat is zero points. It gets done that fast, okay? So I'm allowed 40 points a day plus 10 male cats over. That's what I can schedule right. into the clinic, right. okay? So you'll notice it says how many cats or dogs I have in a day. Yeah. And it also says the weight of a dog. Right. So the, I don't overload the vet. I, I see. balance it out, right. okay? If you're below the poverty level, you can get your dog spayed or neutered, even a dog the size of that St. Bernard, for $17. Wow. And a cat spayed or neutered for $12. Wow. Okay? Now, life never goes in a straight line. So you can't say, well, here's poverty level and you're not in it. Yeah. You know? Because you have to look at the circumstances. Sure. Okay? So we, and once we start a household, if you've got five pets, we try to get all five of them in the clinic. If you need grant money for all five of them, that's how it goes. Because we want to finish, it doesn't make any sense to do four of your dogs and leave one out and you're starting all over again, okay? Right. So we also offer shots, vaccinations. Every, we're not competing with the vets. Veterinarian services is provided by another nonprofit by the name of Arkansans for Animals. You can find them on the internet. 
The veterinarian who does this, her name is Dr. Joanna McManus. She graduated from Oklahoma State University for Veterinary Health Sciences in 1995. She performs approximately 5,000 low-cost spay and neuters a year. The clinic is held in a mobile surgical unit, specifically built and designed for spaying and neutering cats and dogs. And it's held at, I give them the address, and then I give them directions. Come, where are you coming from? Okay, so they can find this right away. Then at the end, I say, a couple of days before the clinic, a couple of days, meaning two, three at the most, another volunteer is going to call you. She's going to remind you to bring your pet to the clinic. She's going to tell you what time to bring it to the clinic and when to take its food away. That way, nobody can forget their appointment. Right. Okay? Actually, it takes, um, takes $35,000 a year. What we need to drop the numbers real down real low is you need to take $35,000 a year the first year and just dump it into people below the poverty level because that's your biggest problem. Sure. You know? And I used to say, if you can't afford the vet, don't get the pet. But that's not true because a person who is below the poverty level needs their pet more maybe, than somebody. Maybe more than... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And... I have discovered that in doing this, if you give those people, I mean, they're living on 700 bucks a month and you say it's $17 for a dog, they still cough it up. Right. They want their animal done. Sure. But if you say it's $67 or 70, they can't do it. Can't it's just it, yeah. out of the realm. So we're always working very hard, either raising money or doing clinic or getting volunteers or whatever it takes to make this clinic run smoothly. I want to also import, add how important it is to have good volunteers. We have good, dedicated volunteers. I don't care how smart you are, how organized you are. If you don't have volunteers, you're nowhere, you know? And we have people who change it. We have people who take time off of work. They make it their vacation time, you know, whatever it is to come into the clinic. And nobody here is a prima donna. If the cat carry needs to be done and somebody poops in it and I have to clean it, that's it. You know, everybody chips in here and nobody complains. We are very fortunate.